Good morning, everyone. I'm just waiting to see if anybody comes in the live class. So let's see, we're at 9.02. Um, I think what I'll do is just go ahead and start off with uh, some common words. And that way, um, we'll go ahead and get started. And then uh, if anyone wants to jump in, then uh, we'll have them. Oh, there's Donna. Perfect. Hi, Donna. How are you? Good. Now I can't hear your microphone. Let me see here. Oh, let's see. There it is. Yay. How are you? Good. Good. So I want to let you know I did get back. Well, my friend got back to me regarding her numbers. So I want to read to you what she said. Okay. So she said, um, as far as writing 11, like this is in years now, 2011, 2022, like, you know, where it's a repeated thing. She said she writes the, the number with the U. So then that tells her that that's the year 2011. So then I asked her, I said, okay, so do you do that in one stroke? Like, like 2011, one U, one U, or would it just be one stroke? And she said, 2011 is just one stroke. So one U you know, would be 2011. So she doesn't like do a number, that. like a number bar one and then you. Yep. One you at the oh. same time. Yep. And then she said, um, she does one you all in one stroke. And then that tells her that's 2011. Same with like, you know, eventually we're going to start hearing 2022. So then right. that would be you, you, um, now oh, she's oh, that's smart. I know, I know. And she said it saves her and she said she had to practice it. But then she said for numbers like, um, Years in the 2000s, she uses either K, initial K, or final Z. So 2000 is 0Z. 2001 is 1Z. 2002 is 2Z. Two now 2006 would be K6. Um, 2007, K7. And, and she said once she got used to it, she said she loves it. Um, okay. It takes her so much time. Um, and then again, back to the 2011. Now she said that a friend of hers also uses for 2011, they throw in one UZ. Um, so she just does one U. Sure. They, you know, so she said you have the flexibility with that one. Now she did say that she doesn't have tricks for the 1900s. She writes like 1950. I thought she did. But she said like 1950, she just writes one nine, comes back for uh, five zero. And I told her, I said, well, now with real time, we'll write. Um, we use like the the asterisks um, to tell our software, okay, this is a year and not a num like a not a uh, like a number meaning like with money. Right. But, um, mm -hmm. but she said she she just writes like 1950 one nine comes back for five zero. So you know, but but as far as the two thousands go, that's how that's what she does. So she really seems you know she enjoys it and she takes a lot of um, expert testimony, a lot of medical. So she said this really helps to. Sure. Kind of stay on top of things. So, all right. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a great, you know, a great option. And she said she got that from another reporter. And once she started practicing it, she said she, you know, she got it down. And then it was now that's all she does. So, okay. Yeah. So, nice. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Oh, I wrote that all down. I did. Type Perfect. that all down. So, <laughs> yes. So, if you have any, if you think of any, like any other question with it, let me know. Okay. And, uh, and I'll ask her, you know. Sounds so. good. All right. Oh, it looks like Catherine joined us. Hi, Catherine. How are you? It's good to have you here. I can see her. Let's see. I think her mute button's on there. I just unmuted you. So it's great to have you. Hi. Can you oh, go ahead. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Awesome. Oh, it's awesome to see you. I'm so glad that you were able to join us. Me too. I'm ready to write. <laughs> okay. Yep. We'll get going. Um, and if you want to go back later on and listen to the beginning of the class, we talked about years. I have a, a friend that is a depot reporter and she gave me some tips on how she writes the years in the 2000s and it saves a couple strokes. So feel free to go back and listen to that. So yeah. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and mute everybody. And then at the end of class, I'll unmute everyone. Uh, so we can take any questions that you might have and and uh, we'll get started. All right, here we go.
All right. So we're going to start out with common words. I always like to do that just to get our fingers going. Okay, ready? Couldn't, yeah, while, mean, home, flu, saw, place, school, help, wait, late, year, can't, house, happen, last, always, move, old, night, nod, life, give, sat, stare, should, moment, another, behind, side, sound, once, find, toward, boy, ever, nothing, front, mother, name, am, sense, reply, speed, bed, leave, new, car, myself, he's, reply, use, mind, maybe, has, heard, baby, answer, minute, yes, until. All right, common phrases. Again, you're gonna to wanna to phrase as much as you can. Here we go. Whether or not he recollected, whether or not he recollects, whether or not he remembered, whether or not he remembers, whether or not he shall, whether or not he should, whether or not he understands, whether or not he wanted, whether or not he wants, whether or not he was, whether or not he will, whether or not he would, whether or not I am, whether or not I believe, whether or not I can, whether or not I could, whether or not I feel, whether or not I felt, whether or not I had, whether or not I happen, whether or not I have, whether or not I have been, whether or not I have had, whether or not I know, whether or not I recall, whether or not I recalled, whether or not I recollect, whether or not I recollected, whether or not I remember, whether or not I remembered, whether or not I shall, whether or not I should, whether or not I understand, whether or not I want, whether or not I wanted, whether or not I was, whether or not I will, whether or not I would, whether or not you are, whether or not you believe, whether or not you believed, whether or not you can, whether or not you could, whether or not you feel, whether or not you felt, whether or not you had, whether or not you have, whether or not you have been, whether or not you have had. All right, moving right into our next drill. This is one of my favorites. I made this up. This focuses on the phrases, I don't, I don't remember, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't know, I can't, I can't remember. Now some of these sentences might sound the same, but they're all different. It's just I've changed up like the, the I don't, I can't, I didn't, and so forth, okay? All right, here we go. I don't, I don't have enough time. I don't find you amusing. I don't understand you. I don't feel like doing that. I don't get to play soccer. I don't agree with you. I don't remember. I don't remember when the accident happened. I don't remember saying anything to him. I don't remember hitting the ball. I don't remember who my insurance carrier was. I don't remember the child's name. I don't know. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if she called. I don't know who made the report. I don't know if that is accurate. I don't know who he is. I didn't. I didn't hear what was said. I didn't file a report. I didn't make the call. I didn't like that flavor. I didn't blame anyone. I didn't find anything exciting. I didn't know. I didn't know it was you. I didn't know you were here. I didn't know you were upset. I didn't know my dog bit you. I didn't know the trial was today. I can't. I can't find the group. I can't figure out the problem. I can't solve the case. I can't qualify for the loan. I can't read the sign. I can't practice with the team. I can't remember. I can't remember what was said. I can't remember why we went. I can't remember if I ever met the group. I can't remember who punched who. I can't remember why the call was made. I don't understand. I didn't understand. I can't understand. I don't understand the question. I didn't understand the question. I can't understand the question. I don't see. I didn't see. I can't see. I don't see the point. I didn't see the point. I can't see the point. 
I don't say, I didn't say, I can't say, I don't say it correctly, I didn't say it correctly, I can't say it correctly, I don't recall, I don't recall what was said, I don't recall who wrote the note, I don't recall who taught the lesson, I don't recall the date of the accident, I can't recall, I can't recall what was said, I can't recall who wrote the note, I can't recall the date of the accident, I can't recall who taught the lesson, I don't recollect, I don't recollect what was said, I don't recollect who wrote the note, I don't recollect who taught the lesson, I don't recollect the date of the accident, I can't recollect, I can't recollect what was said, I can't recollect who wrote the note, I can't recollect the date of the accident, I can't recollect who taught the lesson, I don't go, I didn't go, I can't go, I don't go to other countries, I didn't go to other countries, I can't go to other countries. All right. <clears throat> now I've got some objections and rulings. This focuses on the briefs, so it's like a brief practice. Okay, so it's got all of the objections and um, rulings to practice with. Here we go, ready? Objection, Your Honor, vague and ambiguous. Objection sustained. I object, speculative, overruled. Objection assumes a fact, not an evidence. Objection overruled, counsel. I object to counsel's badgering of the witness. Your objection is sustained. Your Honor, I object on the grounds that it is irrelevant and immaterial. Counsel, I am going to overrule the objection. People object, sustained, proceed, counsel. Objection asked and answered. I will sustain the objection. We object, Your Honor, hearsay, overruled. I'm going to object as to speculation. The objection is overruled. I am objecting to that question as vague. I agree, objection sustained. Objection argumentative. I will overrule your objection, counsel. Objection argumentative, speculative, and calls for hearsay, Your Honor. Objections are sustained. Objection that is pure speculation on the part of the counsel, overruled. I object, the answer is hearsay, sustained. The answer is to be disregarded. That is argumentative, Your Honor. People object, sustained, rephrase the question. Oh, you know what, there's a few more on the back. Sorry about that. Objection on the grounds that it is calling for hearsay. The objection is sustained at this time. I object, Your Honor, it assumes facts, not an evidence. Overruled, I will allow it. Object to this entire line of questioning, Your Honor. Sustained, it goes to hearsay. Your Honor, defense objects, calls for speculation on the part of this witness. I will overrule the objection. Objection, counsel is calling for facts, not an evidence. I will allow it. Love that one. And if you guys have any questions about any of those briefs, just ask me after class, okay? Because I pretty much have um, a brief for all of those. All right, so these are going to be um, uh, vehicle descriptions with license plate numbers, okay? Here we go. 1999 Kia White, license plate number SJD057. 2007 Honda Civic, license number 4RH5869. 2015 White Ford Pickup, license number 5FH399. 1994 Blue Ford Mustang, license number 4BCR310. 2002 Toyota Camry, license number 2WLT681. 2011 Black Jaguar XJ6, license number Z43QWE. 1989 Silver Plymouth Voyager, license number 2VZX341. 2009 Black Lexus S300, license number ITWA431. 2000 Dark Gray Acura Legend, license number 2NZV212. 1990 Maroon Ford Probe, License number 3JTH931. 2008 Blue Saturn SLI. License number 5FWT955. 2015 Beige Toyota Corolla. License number 3NKT351. Uh, Red Ford Escort Wagon 2001. License number 3JCT783. 2011 Black Mazda Miata, license number ZBKT651. 1998 Volkswagen Jetta Green, 
license number B96CNU3, 2015 Toyota 4Runner White, license number CFB0371, 2010 Black Ford Expedition, license number IF34712, 2014 White Nissan Sentra, license number 2RL003, 2007 Silver Dodge Durango, license number 5Z45K48, 1994 Tan Nissan Altima, license number 4BT451, 2005 Black Mazda MX3, license number 2TK0510, 1998 Silver Hyundai <clears throat> Elantra, license number TPHR137, 2014 Honda Civic Coupe, license number 2BVX745, 1993 Ford Aerostar, license number 6ZBC332, 2009 Cheap Cherokee, or Jeep Cherokee Red, license number 1NTL711. <clears throat> All right. I've got some uh, out of order final consonants. Um, they're in sentences. Okay, here we go. Along with final RVE, the ERV, ERF, and ERCH. <clears throat> Ready? The riddle will addle your mind. The saddle fell into the puddle. Ladle the soup and paddle the boat by a metal type of rattle. Whittle your little boy a rattle. The kettle was made of a brittle black metal. It takes nerve and verve to survive. Do not swerve on that curve. John ordered a turf and surf dinner. He made an arch on the porch. The birds had perched in the birch tree. The sun will scorch and parch your body. We had punch with our lunch. He will munch a bunch of carrots. The police plan to pinch the henchmen. They move the pump down the ramp. She looked like a frump because her rump was so plump. The vamp of his shoe caused a bump on his foot. The champ loved to eat shrimp. That punch will quench your thirst. Starch in your shorts won't help you march. Carve the roast before they starve. To settle land, you must have clear title. She was befuddled by the riddle. All right, <clears throat> our last, how are we doing on time? Good, we're doing all right. I've got a couple of medical drills. I'm gonna give you some medical doublets, and then I've got some types of doctors, okay? All right, here we go, ready? Adhesive tape, betadine swab, poison antidote, treatment table, triangle bandage, waterproof tape, alcohol prep, sponge count, sterile gauze, Penrose drain, cervical traction, isolation gown, sodium chloride, tongue depressor, inflatable splint, bluish tinge, bedside rails, ankle support, medicine cups, butterfly closure, whirlpool bath, subjective symptom, ammonia inhalant, oblique incision, latex gloves, patellar reflex, irrigation tray, Collie's fracture or Call's fracture, hand restraints, urine specimen, sodium chloride, extensive hemorrhage, costal cartilage, plastic drape, infrared lamp, finger splint, vein retractors, general anesthetic, neurological testing, mosquito forceps, suture scissors, Foley catheters, frozen section, ACE bandage. All right, so types of doctors. Here we go, ready? Addiction medicine physician, adolescent medicine physician, aerospace medicine physician, allergist, anesthesiologist, cardiac surgeon, cardiologist, cardiovascular disease physician, <clears throat> child neurologist, child psychiatrist, critical care physician, dermatologist, emergency medicine physician, endocrinologist, family practice physician, general practice physician, general surgeon, genetic specialist physician, geat G, I'm sorry, geatric medicine physician, gynecologist, hand surgeon, head and neck surgeon, hematologist, hematologist, oncologist, 
uh, infectious disease physician, internal medicine physician, intra, I'm sorry, interventional pain management physician, interventional radiologist, medical oncologist, neurologist, neuropsychiatrist, neuroradiologist, neurosurgeon, nuclear medicine physician, obstetrician, occupational medicine specialist, oncologist, ophthalmologist, orthopedic ankle and foot surgeon, orthopedic reconstructive surgeon, orthopedic spine surgeon, orthopedic surgeon, pain management physician, pathologist, pediatric cardiologist, pediatric critical care physician, pediatric endocrinologist, pediatric gastroenterologist, pediatric internist, pediatric pulmonary doctor, pediatric radiologist, pediatric surgeon, pediatrician, peripheral vascular disease physician, physician, physical medicine and rehabilitation, plastic reconstructive surgeon, preventive medicine physician, psychiatrist, psychologist, pulmonary disease physician, radiation oncologist, pulmonary critical care physician, <clears throat> radiologist, reproductive endocrinologist, <clears throat> excuse me, sleep medicine specialist, sports medicine specialist, surgical oncologist, thoracic surgeon, transplant surgeon, trauma surgeon, urgent care physician, urologist, vascular surgeon. All right. We're going to go ahead and get started with our literary and jury charge. I'm going to start with jury charge. This is impeaching a witness. And I'm going to start at 180, and then I will work my way. Actually, I'll just start with this one with 180 and then go into 200, kind of get us warmed up, okay? So let me give you a word list. You're going to hear verbatim, Gregory T. Conrad, Nathaniel, Lori Inglebrook, Beverly Young, Kirk J. Taylor, Substantial, Rayburn, Language, Orange, Authored, Impeach, Merely, Susan. All right. Here we go. Ready? Your Honor, this is verbatim. This is the report of September 11th, 2013. This report is authorized and authored by Deputy Gregory T. Conrad and Kirk J. Taylor. Quote, while at the location, a Mrs. Beverly Young, female, age 45, 11278 Orange Street, phone number 781-992-1180, contacted us and stated that she often talked with the victim, Susan Nathaniel, Mrs. Young, further stated that an unknown male who lives somewhere in the neighborhood had been bothering the victim by asking her for dates. Mrs. Young said that the victim would not identify the male, but merely said that she would be surprised if she, Mrs. Young, knew who it was. The unknown male had been calling Susan Nathaniel since the death of her husband. Mrs. Young advised us that the victim stated that she would never date this male because she feared him, explaining that he was crazy, unquote. Now, as an officer of the court, Your Honor, I would like to explain to the court that when I was interviewing Mrs. Young myself, she indicated the following, that she not be interviewed specifically at the murder site. By that, I mean the Nathaniel residence. She indicated she, Lori Inglebrook, and Mrs. Rayburn, and another unknown female, who she does not know by name, were apparently talking near the corner, and the deputy approached them. She, Mrs. Young, told me that she did not make the following statement to the deputy, quote, who lives somewhere in the neighborhood, unquote. She said that Mrs. Nathaniel did not specify or specifically point out this individual who was making the phone calls to be living somewhere in the neighborhood. She further told me that Mrs. Nathaniel did not tell her that this individual was asking her for dates. Mrs. Young further told me that Mrs. Nathaniel did not say, quote, would not identify, but apparently Susan Nathaniel told her, quote, could not identify the male, 
Mrs. Young further told me that the following language, quote, she merely said that she would be surprised if she, Mrs. Young, knew who it was. The male had been calling her since the death of her husband, meaning Susan Nathaniel's husband, end of quote. Mrs. Young said she did not recall saying that to the deputy who interviewed her. Obviously, there are substantial differences between what Mrs. Young is telling me and what Mrs. Young told the deputy sheriff on that date. I would suggest, Your Honor, that I believe that I can impeach my own witness. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Go into another um, set of jury. Well, this is jury instructions. Let me give you a short word list. Four man, assault, penal code, definition, violent, coupled, clarify, academic, legislative, knife, battery, trier, hypothetically, historical, England, assize, stomach, sword, clarify. All right, here we go. And I'm going to start this at two. I'm going to read this at 200, okay? Here we go. The jury has returned in response to the question from the foreman in considering the definition of assault with intent to commit murder. We will clarify wrongful act and attempt was unlawful. I am going to read to you the, the legislative definition of assault from the penal code. The bar review committee has included some other words that probably created some of this confusion. Assault is an unlawful attempt coupled with a present ability to commit a violent injury upon the person of another. You can see in the printed instructions that were submitted to the jury and are made available to the jury during their deliberations, we have added to commit a wrongful act by means of physical force instead of to commit a violent injury when you have an assault. What it really means is that you intend to strike, hit, shoot, or knife another person. In other words, you intend to commit a battery I am not getting too historical or academic in my next comment, hopefully, but one of the cases that most law students read, at least, I read it back in the late 90s when I was attending law school is a case from England. This is a case I guess every law student has read, which I didn't ask counsel if they covered or not, but I am sure that they have. It says, if it wasn't a size time, I would run you through where a man has a sword against the stomach of another and that particular season he is not going to commit a violent injury upon another person. So the question is whether this is an attempt or not. Well, it was not an attempt because he didn't intend to commit a battery. Now the law is that you have to have an unlawful attempt. This means an attempt that is unjustified under the law. And of course, an unlawful attempt could be a wrongful act by means of physical force. So in speaking hypothetically, if you have an unjustified striking of another person, say, not in actual defense of yourself or in actual defense of another person, then it would be considered unlawful. It is unjustified, but you can have such conduct where it is not considered unlawful under the laws of the state. These are determinations for the trier of fact to make under the evidence that is presented. Okay, so I'm going to read to you just one more <clears throat> final argument, and then we'll go right into uh, literary, okay? Here we go. I'm going to read this at 200 and then work my way up to 225. Ready? There is an allegation attached to that count one of robbery that a principal was armed during the commission of the offense. Much has been said about this person named Larry, who apparently, from the testimony, withdrew a revolver while he was standing behind Mr. Yancey. When Mr. Yancey was not in a position to see him, Mr. Dorman is saying he saw the gun and he figured he was going to be hurt by it anyway. That contributed to his fear, all right? You will be instructed that with armed or that armed with a firearm means knowingly to carry a firearm as a means of offense or defense. The word firearm includes a pistol, a rifle, etc., and the instruction goes on to include others. It further says a person who is a principal in the commission of a crime is armed with a firearm if one or more principals in such crime is so armed. Whether or not such person is personally armed with a firearm, that means Mr. Yancey doesn't have to be the one armed with a firearm if another principal is involved, if another person is a principal, and if he is armed. What we have in essence is a gang-related robbery of Mr. Dorman, where a large group of people got involved, some of them perhaps 
even unknown by Mr. Yancey. Mr. Yancey was aware of what was going on. He knew all of these people were involved in the process of robbing Mr. Dorman. Those who took things from him are participants and principals, obviously, in the robbery. And those who assisted in contributing to his fear knowingly assisted our principals in the robbery. The court is going to instruct you that the use of a firearm, you will get an instruction on that. I think technically under the law, what we have here is the use, the brandishing of a weapon in the course of a commission of the crime would be sufficient for use of the firearm. It doesn't have to be fired, but what has been charged is armed, a clearly armed individual, a principal being armed. So I think if you decide that this person, Larry, is a principal in the offense, you must find that the allegation is true that a principal was armed. I will go into the definition of a principal in just a few minutes. <clears throat> so I started at 200 and work my way to 225. Okay, so we're going to do some literary. <clears throat> All right, and this is uh, just legal opinion, okay? All right, let me give you a small word list here. Cable Network, Copyright Act, Compensated, Understatement, Equitable, uh, television, liability, ramification, infringe, complexity, ultimately, desirability, demise, implore, communications, innovations, imposition. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have such bad allergies today. So sorry. Um, okay, so we're going to, I'm going to read this at 200, okay? Just because it is literary, so um, it's still going to be a challenge. Okay, here we go. In this case, we are asked to consider whether the Copyright Act, which was drafted in 1909, applies to one of the recent innovations of the scientific community cable network systems. The operations of cable network systems are based upon the use of other people's property. The issue here is whether in this case, the owner of any copyrighted material should be compensated. And if so, how should he be compensated? From a technical standpoint, the question is, or at least one important question, is whether the use constitutes a performance of the copyrighted material within the meaning of the Copyright Act. It is certainly an understatement to say that the Copyright Act, including the concept of performance, was not created with the development of cable network systems in mind. At the same time, the ramifications of any decisions we may reach as to the copyright liability of cable network systems are very extensive. On the other hand, it can be predicted that the imposition of full liability upon all cable network systems operations could result in the demise of this new important instruments of mass communications or in its becoming a tool of the powerful networks which already had a substantial number of copyrights of original materials used in the television broadcasting industry. On the other hand, it is foreseen that a decision to the effect that cable network systems never infringes on the copyrights of other programs they carry would permit some systems to overpower local broadcasting stations, which must pay directly and indirectly for copyright licenses and with which cable network systems is in increasing competition the court recognizes the competing considerations, the complexity of any conceivable equitable solution and the obvious desirability of ultimately reaching a solution. As you know, an important legal question is involved in this case. It must be resolved to satisfy the requirements of the Copyright Act and at the same time, not discourage growth and development in this new field. I encourage each member of the panel to carefully weigh the evidence that has been presented to you and to weigh the obvious ramifications against the less obvious ramifications. I implore you to seek a solution that is not only applicable now, but applicable in similar situations in the future. Okay, how are we doing? We're still doing good. Okay, I'm gonna read one more. A literary segment. Okay. Here. And this subject is public health care. Here we go. I will read this at 200. 
Mr. Speaker, today I am re reintroducing a bill to repeal Titles 3 and 6 of the Public Health Services Act, which was created by Public Law 15-602, the National Health and Resources Development Act of 2013. I am recommending the repeal of Public Law 15-602 for the following reasons. First, the law provided for the total and centralized control of health care by the federal government. Obviously, this is a major step toward complete nationalization of the healthcare professionals. It is recognized that federal health planning will lead to total federal control of healthcare. One of the goals of the plan is to collectivize the payments for medical services. Another goal is to propose maximum allowable charge, charges for drugs and professional services to the elderly and the indigent. Health planning can work only if the federal government has total control over the supply of healthcare services. Second, federal health planning is a step toward politicizing the entire field of healthcare. <clears throat> the supply of health services such as hospitals, clinics, and laboratories is not determined by the demand for services, but rather by the officers of a health system agency who makes a decision not always based on need, but on politics. Third, this law will impede the delivery of health services to the rural areas where the political pull is less than that of the more populous areas. Fourth, Public Law 15-602 is unconstitutional on, on many grounds. Several states have filed writs charging that Public Law 15-602 violates the Tenth Amendment. If we continue on this path, the American people will be denied the right to control their own health care. Government will be involved in every, everything from fee setting to hiring medical practitioners. We must change our course and begin to eliminate the government's control and interference into the health care. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to move right into Q&A. <clears throat> I'm going to read this one time at 180, and then again at 200, and again at 225. Okay, this is going to be defense questioning. Here we go. This will be at 180. Ready? Was any surgery performed upon you? No, they didn't even sew up the cuts. After your hospitalization, did you return home? No, I was transferred to St. Thomas, which was closer to home. How long were you at St. Thomas? Around a week. I don't recollect just exactly. What doctors treated you while you were at St. Thomas? Dr. Needham, N-E-E-D-A-H, excuse me, N-E-E-D-H-A-M. Can you spell that again, please? Yes, N-E-E-D-H-A-M. Does he have a particular type of specialty? Yes, neurosurgery. Was surgery performed on you at St. Thomas? No, I had a lot of tests. After your stay at St. Thomas, did you return home? Yes. How long of a period of convalescence did you spend at home? I was at home with a tutor for the first semester of my senior year of high school and until March or April of the next year. When did you return to school on a normal basis? April, but I can't remember the day. Were you bedridden during the entirety of this period? No. At what point were you no longer bedridden? As soon as I got home, I was in the house most of the time, but not bedridden. What was the reason then that you didn't attend school regularly? Loss of memory. I had a lot of catching up to do, I guess. When did you commence tutoring or commence being tutored? About a week or two after I got home. Were you able to graduate with your class in June? I didn't go through these ceremonies with the class, but I finished school that summer, excuse me, that year. Prior to the accident, had you ever been hospitalized? I had my tonsils out, nothing major. When did you have your tonsils out? How old were you approximately? About six. Were you ever in the hospital on any other occasion? When I was real young, about three or four, I had a bladder infection and I was in for a couple of days then. Prior to the accident, had you ever been under the treatment of a doctor other than for the average cold, flu, or such an illness as this? I don't remember. My mom might know. Let's focus on your years in high school. Do you recall any lengthy absence from school due to illness? Not a long time, no. How about during middle school? No. 
during elementary or grammar school? Just tonsils. How would you describe your health today? Fairly good. I still have headaches sometimes. Do you believe that those headaches are related to the accident? I can't state it as a fact, but I didn't have them before as much. Everybody has headaches once in a while. When did you first start to experience headaches? As soon as I can remember waking up after the accident, I mean real bad ones. Has anyone ever told you the cause of these headaches? They have told me it could have been from the accident. Who have those individuals been? Dr. Needham, how frequently do you experience these headaches? Now, about a couple of times a week. What is their duration? Well, until I take something for it, take some 800 strength Tylenol or something. Are you presently under medication from a doctor for this condition? No, I just take Tylenol or something. As far as you are concerned then, the only health condition that you have today would be your headaches, is that correct? I believe so, my lungs are still a little bit, I don't know. I was told they were injured or damaged. Do they give you any pain? Some when I get very tired or exercise a lot. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna read that again at 200. Okay. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Was any surgery performed upon you? No, they didn't even sew up the cuts. After your hospitalization, did you return home? No, I was transferred to St. Thomas, which was closer to home. How long were you at St. Thomas? Around a week, I don't recollect just exactly what doctors treated you while you were at St. Thomas. Dr. Needham, N-E-E-D-H-A-M. Can you spell that please? N-E-E-D-H-A-M. Does he have a particular type of specialty? Yes, neurosurgery. Was surgery performed on you at St. Thomas? No, I had a lot of tests. After your stay at St. Thomas, did you return home? Yes. How long a period of convalescence did you spend at home? I was at home with a tutor for the first semester of my senior year of high school and until March or April of the next year. When did you return to school on a normal basis? April, but I can't remember the day. Were you bedridden during the entirety of this period? No. At what point were you no longer bedridden? As soon as I got home, I was in the house most of the time, but not bedridden. What was the reason then that you didn't attend school regularly? Loss of memory. I had a lot of catching up to do, I guess. When did you commence tutoring or commence being tutored? About a week or two after I got home. Were you able to graduate with your class in June? I didn't go through the ceremonies with the class, but I finished school that year. Prior to the accident, had you ever been hospitalized? I had my tonsils out, nothing major. When did you have your tonsils out? How old were you approximately? About six. Were you ever in the hospital on any other occasion? When I was real young, about three or four, I had a bladder infection, and when I was in for a couple of days then, just prior to the accident, had you ever been under the treatment of a doctor other than for the average cold flu or such an illness as this? I don't remember, my mom might know. <clears throat> Let's focus on your years in high school. Do you recall any lengthy absence from school due to illness? Not a long time, no. How about during middle school? No. During elementary or grammar school? Just tonsils. How would you describe your health today? Fairly good, I still have headaches sometimes. Do you believe that those headaches are related to the accident? I can't state it as a fact, but I didn't have them much before. Everybody has headaches once in a while. When did you first start to experience headaches? As soon as I can remember waking up after the accident, I mean real bad ones. Has anyone ever told you the cause of these headaches? They have told me it could have been from the accident. Who have those individuals been? Dr. Needham, how frequently do you experience these headaches? Now, about a couple of times a week. What is their duration? Well, until I take something for it, take some 800 strength Tylenol or something. Are you presently under medication from a doctor for this condition? No, I just take Tylenol or something. As far as you are concerned, then the only health condition that you have today would be your headaches, is that correct? I believe so, my lungs are still a little bit, I don't know. I was told they were injured or damaged. Do they give you any pain? Some when I get very tired or exercise a lot. <clears throat> All right, so this time I'm going to read this at 225. Okay. Here we go, ready? Was any surgery performed upon you? 
No, they didn't even sew up the cuts. After your hospitalization, did you return home? No, I was transferred to St. Thomas, which was closer to home. How long were you at St. Thomas? Around a week. I don't recollect just exactly what doctors treated you while you were at St. Thomas. Dr. Needham, N-E-E-D-H-A-M. Can you spell that, please? N-E-E-D-H-A-M. Does he have a particular type of specialty? Ne yes, neurosurgery. Was surgery performed on you at St. Thomas? No, I had a lot of tests. After your stay at St. Thomas, did you return home? Yes. How long of a period of convalescence did you spend at home? I was at home with a tutor for the first semester of my senior year of high school and until March or April of the next year. When did you return to school on a normal basis? April, but I can't remember the day. Were you bedridden during the entirety of this period? No. At what point were you no longer bedridden? As soon as I got home, I was in the house most of the time, but not bedridden. What was the reason then that you didn't attend school regularly? Loss of memory. I had a lot of catching up to do, I guess. When did you commence tutoring or commence being tutored? About a week or two after I got home. Were you able to graduate with your class in June? I didn't go through the ceremonies with the class, but I finished school that year. Prior to the accident, had you ever been hospitalized? I had my tonsils out, nothing major. When did you have your tonsils out? How old were you approximately? About six. Were you ever in the hospital on any other occasion? When I was real young, about three or four, I had a bladder infection and I was in for a couple of days then. Prior to the accident, had you ever been under the treatment of a doctor other than for the average cold, flu, or such an illness as this? I don't remember. My mom might know. Let's focus on your years in high school. Do you recall any lengthy absence from school due to illness? Not a long time, no. How about during middle school? No, during elementary or grammar school, just tonsils. How would you describe your health today? Fairly good, I still have headaches sometimes. Do you believe that those headaches are related to the accident? I can't state it as a fact, but I didn't have them before as much. Everybody has headaches once in a while. When did you first start to experience headaches? As soon as I can remember waking up after the accident. I mean, I real bad ones. Has anyone ever told you the cause of these headaches? They have told me it could have it could have been from the accident. Who have those individuals been? Dr. Needham, how frequently do you experience these headaches? Now about a couple of times a week. What is their duration? Well, until I take something for it, take some 800 strength Tylenol or something. Are you presently under medication from a doctor for this condition? No, I just take Tylenol or something. As far as you are concerned, then the only health condition that you have today would be for your headaches. Is that correct? I believe so. My lungs are still a little bit. I don't know. I was told they were injured or damaged. Do they give you any pain? Some when I get very tired or exercise a lot. All right. So Robert did give me the okay to uh, throw in a little bit at 250 for you guys. So I'm going to read this again one more time at 250. Okay. All right. So here we go. <clears throat> Ready? Was any surgery performed upon you? No, they didn't even sew up the cuts. After your hospitalization, did you return home? No, I was transferred to St. Thomas, which was closer to home. How long were you at St. Thomas? Around a week. I don't recollect just exactly what doctors treated you while you were at St. Thomas. Dr. Needham, N-E-E-D-H-A-M. Can you spell that, please? N-E-E-D-H-A-M. Does he have a particular type of specialty? Yes, neurosurgery. What surgery performed or was surgery performed on you at St. Thomas? No, I had a lot of tests. After your stay at St. Thomas, did you return home? Yes. How long a period of convalescence did you spend at home? I was at home with a tutor for the first semester of my senior year of high school and until March or April of the next year. When did you return to school on a normal basis? April, but I can't remember the day. Were you bedridden during the entirety of this period? No. At what point were you no longer bedridden? As soon as I got home, I was in the house most of the time, but not bedridden. What was the reason then that you didn't attend school regularly? Loss of memory. I had a lot of catching up to do, I guess. When did you commence tutoring or commence being tutored? About a week or two after I got home. Were you able to graduate with your class in June? I didn't go through the ceremonies with the class, but I finished school that year. Prior to the accident, had you ever been hospitalized? I had my tonsils out, nothing major. When did you have your tonsils out? How old were you approximately? About six. Were you ever in the hospital on any other occasion? When I was real young, about three or four, I had a bladder infection and I was in for a couple of days then. Prior to the accident, had you ever been under the treatment of a doctor other than for the average cold flu or such an illness as this? 
I don't remember. My mom might know. Let's focus on the years in high school. Do you recall any lengthy absence from school due to illness? Not a long time, no. How about during middle school? No. During elementary or grammar school? Just tonsils. How would you describe your health today? Barely good. I still have headaches sometimes. Do you believe that those headaches are related to the accident? I can't state it as a fact, but I didn't have them before as much. Everybody has headaches once in a while. When did you first start to experience headaches? As soon as I can remember waking up after the accident, I mean real bad ones. Has anyone ever told you the cause of these headaches? They have told me it could have been from the accident. Who have those individuals been? Dr. Needham, how frequently do you experience these headaches? Now, about a couple of times a week. What is their duration? Well, until I take something for it, take some 800 strength Tylenol or something. Are you presently under medication from a doctor for this condition? No, I just take Tylenol or something. As far as you are concerned, then the only health condition that you have today would be your headaches. Is that correct? I believe so. My lungs are still a little bit. I don't know. I was told they were injured or damaged. Do they give you any pain? Some when I get very tired or exercise a lot. All right, so that pretty much was 250 there. How are we doing on time? All right, so I'm going to give you guys um, another, I'm just going to read this um, at 200, okay? And this is a plaintiff, and it is for voice, all right? It's going to start out with plaintiff, and then it's going to go to cross-examination. I'm going to read this at uh, 200. There we go. <clears throat> Now, Mr. Taylor, when you say you struck Mr. Bartholomew once with the stick and then you struck him a second time and then the third time the stick broke, were you just trying to restrain his advances or were you trying to strike him so that he would let go of the knife? I was trying to knock him senseless. Do you think that the third blow that you used was the strongest blow of the three? I don't think it was any stronger than any of the other ones, although I used every bit of strength to deliver it. Who took the knife away from Samuel Bartholomew? Darla Bartholomew, his wife. After the knife was taken away by Darla, did you see where it was taken? Did you see where it was put? No, right after she got it, even her son, Dave, he took it. Did you see what he did with it? No. Did you get a look at the knife? Yes, I did. Could you please describe for the court what type of knife it was? It just looked like a large butcher knife. How long would you estimate the blade to be? Approximately six to eight inches. Would you describe what clothing you had on at that time? I had on a white t-shirt, some blue jeans, a brown leather jacket, and riding boots. Your Honor, I have a white cardboard box, which previously has been marked for identification as People's One. You have had an opportunity to examine this. Is that right, Mrs. Delaney? Yes, I have. From the box in the presence of the clerk, I will extract certain objects. I will hand the witness this first one marked People's 1A for identification. Could you tell us what this is? My white t-shirt. Did you have that on at the time you were stabbed with the knife? Yes, I did. Prior to this assault on your person and directing your attention now to the area in the back of the t-shirt, was that cut there? No, it wasn't. I will offer that in evidence as People's 1A, Your Honor. It will be received in evidence as People's 1A. Mr. Taylor, showing you People's 1B for identification, a pair of jeans, and what appears to be a tannish red stain on the front and rear portions. Are those the pants that you had on on that date? Yes, they are. I will offer these in evidence as People's 1B, Your Honor. For the record, these jeans have a large rip at the top of the pants towards the rear. Was that there prior to your assault? No. Was the brown stain there prior to the assault? No. The jeans will be received in evidence as People's 1B. Is this the vest that you had on that day? Yes, sir, it is. Directing your attention again to a torn portion of the back, surrounded by a reddish brown stain, were they there prior to your being struck? No, they weren't. I will offer that as 1C, Your Honor. It will be received as 1C in evidence. After this attack, were you taken to the hospital by Sergeant Hale of the Nevada State Police? Yes, sir, I was. And were you still wearing this clothing at that time? That's correct. And did anyone else accompany you to the hospital? No one. I don't believe I have any further questions, Your Honor. All right, you may cross-examine Mrs. Delaney. Mr. Taylor, approximately how many years had you been known or had you known Mr. Bartholomew before this incident occurred? 
I'm not sure when he was elected to the city council. I guess I knew him about three years. Would you say that you are active in local government in the city of Las Vegas? I am not active in the city government. I am concerned. I am a concerned citizen. I want to know how my tax dollars are being spent. All right, when you have complaints and objections about things that are going on in the city of Las Vegas, do you take your problems to the city council meeting? No. Okay, did you have some objection to the way Samuel Bartholomew was conducting his office? No. Well, yes. What was that complaint? I did not agree with Mr. Bartholomew's defense of the use of the chokehold when arrests were being made. Did you have some dislike for Mr. Bartholomew before this incident? Yes, I did. What was this dislike based upon? Well, it was on the platform he used to get elected, too many promises, and he hasn't done a thing except collect his salary. I need to see counsel, or excuse me, sorry, you guys. I need to see counsel in my chambers. Sorry about that, you guys. I didn't see the sign change there. All right, so that was at 200. So hopefully that felt a little bit easier since we went all the way up to 250. We've got a couple more minutes. So I'm gonna do one more thing for you guys. This is a Q&A that's a one page. And I like that because we have time to read it once at, uh, I'm gonna read it once at 180, 200. Well, actually, why don't we do 200, 225, 250, okay? You're gonna hear Los Angeles. I like to brief that as L-A-N-G-S. Uh, you're gonna hear approximately Toyota truck, uh, vehicle observe, description, uh, police, or no, I'm sorry, particular, um, Volkswagen, incident. Oh, and allegedly. Okay, this is gonna be plaintiff. I'm gonna read this at uh, 200, here we go. Officer, what is your occupation and present assignment? Well, I am a police officer for the city of Los Angeles, currently assigned to Harbor Division Patrol. Before taking the stand, did you get a chance to refresh your memory regarding an incident allegedly occurring on March 14? Yes, I did. Can you remember the incident without reference to the report? Yes, I can. Now on that day, did you respond to a particular location in the county of Los Angeles? Yes, I did. About what time did you arrive there? This was, I believe, approximately 10 o'clock in the morning. What was the first thing that you did when you arrived on the scene? I checked a vehicle which was parked at that location. Was that the Volkswagen? Yes. What was written on the car or how was the car identified if it was? It was a green car with the words Ace Plumbing written on the front of it. When you approached the car, did you observe anyone in the car? Yes, I did. Can you describe that individual? Well, I could give you a general description of what he looked like. Yes, do the best you can. He had sandy blonde hair and kind of bushy eyebrows. He was slender. Okay, now I'm going to read that again, but at, um, that was at 200. I'm going to read now at 225. Here we go. Officer, what is your occupation and present assignment? Well, I am a police officer for the city of Los Angeles, currently assigned to Harbor Division Patrol. Before taking the stand, did you get a chance to refresh your memory regarding an incident allegedly occurring on March 14? Yes, I did. Can you remember the incident without reference to the report? Yes, I can. Now on that day, did you respond to a particular location in the County of Los Angeles? Yes, I did. About what time did you arrive there? This was, I believe, approximately 10 o'clock in the morning. What was the first thing that you did when you arrived at the scene? I checked a vehicle which was parked at the location. What was the, was that the Volkswagen car? Yes. What was written on the car or how was the car identified if it was? It was a green car with the words Ace Plumbing written on the front of it. When you approached the car, did you observe anyone in the car? Yes, I did. Can you describe that individual? Well, I could give you a general description of what he looked like. Yes, do the best you can. He had sandy blonde hair and kind of bushy eyebrows. He was slender. Okay, sorry about that. I kind of messed up there. Um, I'm going to read this one last time at 250, okay? Here we go. Officer, what is your occupation and present assignment? Well, I am a police officer for the city of Los Angeles, currently assigned to Harbor Division Patrol. Before taking the stand, did you get a chance to refresh your memory regarding an incident allegedly occurring on March 14? Yes, I did. Can you remember the incident without reference to the report? Yes, I can. Now on that day, did you respond to a particular location in the county of Los Angeles? Yes, I did. And about what time did you arrive there? This was, I believe, approximately 10 o'clock in the morning. What was the first thing that you did when you arrived on the scene? I checked a vehicle which was parked at that location. 
was that the Volkswagen car? Yes. What was written on the car or how was the car identified if it was? It was a green car with the words Ace Plumbing written on the front of it. When you approached the car, did you observe anyone in the car? Yes, I did. Can you describe that individual? Well, I could give you a general description of what he looked like. Yes, do the best you can. He had sandy blonde hair and kind of bushy eyebrows. He was slender. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to unmute everyone. All right, what did you guys think about that? It's great. Good. Did you guys like that I kind of threw in a little bit of the 250? Did that seem to help? Yes. Good, good. Uh, Robert said we can, you know, I talked to him about that. He said he'd rather me do that in the live class as a class as opposed to the, the recorded. So I said, all right, well. Yeah. I have a question, yeah. Um, yeah. Like more of a transcript question, if you know. In that one of those Q and A's we just did, the attorneys, the attorney was questioning something about the exhibits. Okay. Then he, he asked the witness, I think he asked the witness something, and then he said, for the record, blah, blah, blah. Do I need to put that for the record as colloquy? Yes. Well, and you don't have to so much when you're writing it, obviously. I would say right. don't worry about that. But right. when you go to transcribe that, absolutely. I would start a new line. It would be a colloquy line. And if, like this, in this case, that attorney's name is Mr. Phillips. And it would just be Mr. Phillips, you know, uh, for the record, you know. Seven. Uh, you know, let's see here. I'm going to see if I can find it. But yeah, for the record. I would like to, uh, I will offer this in evidence or it's live. You know, whatever it is. Really cool. Yeah. Um, yes. Anytime they, they're, re they're talking, you know, they're, re they're referring to anything regarding exhibits for the record or, you know, anything like that. You, even if, if they throw that in right in the middle of in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you would want to go down to the next line, and it would okay. just be a colloquy line. And then if he goes right back into questioning, um, just dash it. Yep. And yep. And or if it's a complete sentence, you can put a period at the end, and then just go right into by Mr. Phillips. Question: uh, You know, when is the last time that you have seen this white shirt that has the blood on it? You know. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I've and that does that a number of times while I've been proofing for other, another reporter. In the middle of talking to the witness, I'll say, and for the record, this is blah, 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 and then continue the question. So I just want to make sure I'm doing it correctly. Yep. Okay. Yep. You definitely would want to um, segregate that just to reflect that he's, because really he is talking to the court saying, for yeah. the record, this is, you know, I'm going to be yeah. introducing this or showing the witness this or. Yeah, or even if it's a deposition and they're talking about, uh, you know, they're just talking about uh, a, a, an actual exhibit, you know, I would definitely uh, segregate that because it's not really a, a question. It's more he's pointing this out, you yes. know. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Welcome. And did you guys do, let me grab something real quick. I know I like to just kind of throw things on the ground after I'm done with them because I don't want to get it mixed <laughs> up with something that I've, you know, that I haven't read yet. But did you guys... Do you guys know pretty much, I'm sure you do, but all of the, um, the different briefs for like uh, hearsay, immaterial, um, big and ambiguous. You guys have all those? I've kind of made my own, but I would love to see yours. Oh, yes. Okay. Can you just email it to me or? And, and real quick, I can just for everybody else there. Yes. Um, just so you guys know. So vague and ambiguous, I do vabes, V long A, B S, vabes. I love that one. Vague and ambiguous. Speculative, I do S P E K T. Um, let's see. Um, argumentative, I like to write it as A R G T. Hearsay, H A E R S. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Um, let's see. What else is there? We. Oh, on the ground, you guys do O-E-G? Yes. Yeah, and then if they do on the grounds, just add your Z. Yeah, it's on the floor. As a matter of fact. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Let's see. Oh, immaterial, do you guys do I-M-T? Okay. Immaterial, I object, I just do I-B. That are in the class right now. 
Um, let's see. Is there anything? This is an app. It's a Zoom app. You're you right. get a password and I do when you go to the meeting to the class. Mm -hmm. so I literally have a class. Like I have okay, to. we object. <clears throat> you have a choice there. You can either write it as W E B, but then that's gonna conflict with web. So then you would probably have to, you know, you'd have to definitely flag one of them. Um, or you can do W O E B. You you have the choice there. Okay. Either one works. Um, in material, I think I told you IMT. I do write out um, when they say assumes a fact, not in evidence. I'm sure that there is probably one out there. The only thing I do do is assumes a fact. I do SM final FD. So at least that takes care of assumes a fact. But then I come back for a not in evidence, you know, evidence EFD. So, but I'm sure there's one for that whole thing, assumes a fact, not an evidence. I just think I remember as a student, I wasn't picking it up, so I thought, okay, forget it. I'll just use the brief for assumes a fact. That's what I did if I- I've done several of those. Yeah, yeah that's what you do. Yeah, so, uh, but I'm sure there's probably a great one there. You guys know, does anybody have one that they use for that? You might say something like, oh, Jesus. Assumes a fact, not an evidence. No? Okay. Yeah. There, I know there's probably got to be one out there. So. Smith. Uh, Smith. Los Angeles, L-A-N-G-S. Um, I love that one. And I, I know some students like to write L-O-G-S, but to me that's too close to lotion because lotion's just with a long O. So, um, you know, I like to use L-A-N-G-S for Los Angeles. So you can take class with me, Kev. So, <laughs> so okay. Well, does anybody have any other questions? No, I don't think someone knows that their mic is on. <laughs> I and I I can't like <laughs> just mute one of us. <laughs> I don't think that um and it, she doesn't have a name here, so I don't know. It just says S G H, and then a number. Yeah, no, I can just see her hand now. I don't think she does know that. I'll just go ahead and there. I I <laughs> muted her there. And of course, thing. I think I told you guys once. I had a gal once show up to class. She didn't know her um, her camera was on, and her hair was like in rollers. And oh, I don't know if she was going to like was in a wedding or something, but her hair was in rollers. And she said, "Oh, I'm here, but um, you know, I'm not going to turn my mic on." And I said, "Oh, I can see you." And she was mortified. Oh my, oh my gosh, you can see me. So, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, <laughs> her. I, I thought maybe, I thought, well, for a second, I thought, well, she has, you know, we're all talking. So, I thought she just assumed that she was on me. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. So, hey, well, you guys, I took my final segment of the RPR yesterday and it came back as an initial pass, but we have to wait and see for final. <laughs> Yay! Yay! It was just it was at 95%. So if I get one more thing wrong, it could go south. I don't know. So we'll yeah, see. Sometimes it'll be the opposite where they'll have, like, it'll come back as, oh, a couple over, but then they'll say, oh, this is okay. That's okay. You know, okay. they'll, oh, Donna. My final one. I will be praying for you that it, it's a pass. Thank when you. do you find out? You know, um, they said it's in a week, so I should know by next Thursday. Sometimes it's faster than that. I've had results in two days or seven days. So next Friday, I'll tell you. I'll cry or I'll yes. smile. No, 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 here. Really quick, I'm going to write my number down. Okay. My, and please text me and let me know. Okay. And you, anybody, you guys, if you ever have questions, feel free to text me. Oh, wait. If I Donna. did class, it was a good learning experience. It wasn't that the material was super reasonable. It was? Yeah, but I still was like, my fingers weren't, <laughs> just weren't attached to my hands, you know, it was crazy. Oh, Donna, I... Don Donna, yeah. what, um, I'm attempting my first leg this month, okay. Okay. so I'm just curious what order you did yours in. I did jury charge first, because that's easiest for me, that's and then I'm I did doing. lit, and I had to do lit twice, and then yesterday I did um, the Q&A. And okay. I, the material seems to me 
not as hard as the practice material that we get on their site or even here. Like it's really reasonable. It's just nerves that get you. Mm -hmm. Nerves. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Well, it was, it wasn't the material was, you were going to know, you're going to know it. Okay. I'm, I'm excited. That's the order I was planning on going into. I was just curious what you did. So exactly. Yes. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck, you. Catherine. Wait, we'll see how it goes. I think that that's smart. The way Donna said, do the, the jury charge first, just because, you know, it just seems to be, you know, like we have so many briefs for all of that. So, right. And then yeah. you get some confidence when you do yeah. that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. When do you take it, Catherine? Um, I have to, I registered for it, but I haven't scheduled it yet, but I have to schedule it within the next, I think, well, less than 30 days now, yeah. but it's within 30 yeah. days. So okay. it's um, the hardest yeah. part is like pushing the button, right? Like, okay, I'm committing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I questioned whether I'm really ready to take it yet, but I kind of thought if I registered for it, the next three weeks are going to like push, push me because I have to. Yeah. So anyways, Jill, if you want to push on some jury charge in the next coming weeks, that'd be awesome for yes. me. Yes. Let me write that like, down. Well, my dad called a minute. So push jury charge. Okay. All right. That's I'll push on everything so that hopefully then it, I always feel like that kind of makes up for nerves. If you're getting pushed, then hopefully, then, you know, you're, if you're a little nervous, then it's going to seem, you know, a little bit slower. So exactly. yeah, for sure. Absolutely. All yep. right. You can do it. I'm just press that button and get it, get it sent. There we go. <laughs> so you can always there we go. Try again. I know it's like 75 bucks, but you can always try again. You know, I know that's the first true. time just makes you feel like now you know what to expect. Yeah. Oh, and the scariest, did you take like the, um, proctored practice exam yet? I haven't done that yet. No. Just do that. It'll give you it's exactly like it goes. And so just mm -hmm. so you know how to get all your files pasted in. Mm -hmm. and, um, like I had to cover up things in my room and that was the most nerve wracking part for me, just getting everything set up to take the exam. Right. So yeah. Do that first. Okay. Yes. I, I was planning on how far in advance did you do that? It wasn't the same day, right? No, I did it the same week. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. And then every potter wanted things a little bit different. So just be aware, just be flexible and it's okay. Just breathe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can do it. I have faith in you, Catherine. You can do it. Thanks. And I'm sure your initial pass is going to turn into a for sure pass. I think sure. that's usually the way it goes. Yes. I sure hope so. From what I've heard. Yes. So, yes. That's awesome. Yay. Yeah, because usually it's the opposite where you get, you know, you'll hear somebody say, oh, I was, you know, four over, and then they'll find things and say, okay, it is a pass. It's okay. So... There was one thing. Oh, I guess I can't share what they said. Never mind. I can't talk about it. I can't say what it was. Okay. The but there was one thing I was like, oh, do I? Anyway, I was questioning, but anyways. Yeah, when we'll you see. get your results back, then let us know what that thing is. I'm yes, curious. I will. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, please text me and let me know when you get your results. Yeah, either way, I'll text you and I can, you know, I'll try to be brave and say it was just a good experience if I didn't pass it. That's right. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's the great thing, you guys. You know, the, the state test, I remember the first time I passed the academics, but not the machine. And that was when they had everything in two days. But I think it was so nerve wracking because in my mind, I'm thinking, and back then they only did it once every six months. So I'm thinking if I don't pass, I have to wait six months, you know, but that's a great thing about the, the RPR is you can just, you know, I mean, like you said, it's $75, but you get to, you can take it again. You know, it's not like, Oh, I got to wait now another three months or six oh, months. So much pressure. Yeah. Oh, it is. It is. So, um, you know, now it's a little different, but it's, yeah. it, you know, I, I, even three months is better than having to wait six months, you know? Yes. So, um, yes, it, it, I, I think it's awesome. And Catherine, you let me know too, how, how it goes. All right. I will. Okay. And you guys have a great day and, uh, Thank I will you. talk to you soon. Thank, Thank you for you. watching live. Okay. Bye. Bye guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>